So I'm just going to run through a simple demonstration of using the tracking generator feature on the Isotec ISO 830TG spectrum analyzer. As the name suggests, the tracking generator is a signal generator that tracks the frequency of the spectrum analyzer. Um, so it's an incredibly handy feature to have that allows you to do things such as measuring the frequency response of circuits. Um, now to enable the tracking generator, we need to press the option key followed by F1 for TG, and then F1 again to turn the tracking generator on. Now, if we press the F2 key, we can set the level of the output, which for the passive components that we'll be looking at is not so critical, but if you're using an active circuit, it might be. Um, so the level is currently set to zero dBm, we can see in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Uh, so if we connect the output of the tracking generator to the RF input on the analyzer, we can see that we've got a uh, sweep there across, uh, all the way across from 0 to 3 gigahertz um, and uh, at around 0 dBm. Um, now that's not completely linear because of the effects of the cable, so what we need to do is to correct for that, we need to normalize for that. Um, now to do that we can set the uh, level of the signal that will be used for performing that task. Um, that's selected by pressing F5 for the reference value. Uh, we can see that that's set to 0 dBm uh, which is fine, um, in the, certainly in this case. So then we can uh, press F3 to execute normalization and then F2, select yes. And we can see the result there with correction in place. Now if we press F6 to return, uh, we can check there that normalization correction is turned on. Uh, we can toggle this between on and off by pressing F4, just to see the effect again without that correction in place. turn it back on. Now the first component that we're going to look at is a simple um, 20 dB attenuator or pad. So we disconnect one end of this cable, leave this join in place and then the attenuator. We can see that there's been a, a reduction in two squares which is 20 dB, it's 10, 10 dB per division. So that's just as we would expect. Take the 20 dB attenuator out of line. We could now try a resistive power divider. So the insertion loss for this particular device should be 6 dB on each of the two output ports. Uh, we've made sure to terminate the port that's not in use with a 50 ohm load. And then with the resistive divider in place, we can see that we're just less than one division down. Um, so, yeah, six dBs. We can also try a low pass filter. Let's remove this join. So this filter, a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 500 megahertz. That's pretty much what we'd expect to see. If we try a high pass filter.
which is a 2.8 gigahertz high pass filter. Each division is 300 megahertz, so we can see attenuation below 2. Point, well, significantly below 2.7 gigahertz. There, it's starting to drop off. So there we are.